Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Debbie Kilday, and um, I'm a beat poet and an author um, of a few books. And I've been running, um, I, I started the National Beat Poetry Foundation to continue the work that uh, basically Jack Kerouac started uh, with Allen Ginsberg and William Burroughs um, so that the beat poets um, community would not die off. You know, we're a new generation of beats and um, I create events to give everyone a, a voice and have a chance. It's kind of challenging during COVID though, <laughs> but uh, we do have Zoom, so it's working out a little bit. What is B? What is B? He asked me what, what is B? B was, so I told him. Is B? B is not a what. B is a bit. What is B? It's jazz blue. What is crying B? out on a night of bloody stars? So I'm going to um, get some stuff together for tonight. And I'm going to start reading. This is called The Silence Chimed. The silence chimed as the first snowflake of the season began its descent. It came alone to scout the territory. I watched in amazement its twirling multi-dimensional dance, a chiming bell of beauty with wings. It flittered silently past me, sticking softly to the earth. Then the parade started. I often venture outside to wait in silence to witness this army of twirling dancers descending. They make a sound like the chiming of a faint bell. As they float in the darkness, at first I feel alone as they have each other. They unite and gather, forming a carpet of light. I stand to witness their unity as their numbers increase. They begin to envelop me, each one ever so gently, laying their hands on me. It's a healing, nurturing act. Some on my hair forming a hat, others melting into my bare skin, moistening my spirit. They aren't just snowflakes, they are nurturers, bringing sustenance and hope for the future. Next, I'm gonna read, to live in the realm. To live in the realm of the naked truth takes no prisoners. The lives live strong in the reception of deception. We succumb to the lavish lifestyles of those that are empty. Our truths will be told to the children as fables once believed. Our ignorance is not knowing how to see will be our undoing. But not all is lost. There is still hope. Hope lives yet underground, at least for now. Because as dawn breaks, so do we sometimes. The burdens are many, sometimes too much to bear. Our brains are wrecked, overwhelmed with information, but nothing of substance is obtained. It's all gibberish unless you can hear the frail voices in the distance. We have a chance to see beauty beyond the sorrow, life among the dead, for the future isn't written until the steps have been taken. 
Tread gently through what's left of the forest. Listen to the voices of trees. Caress their braille of bark. Hug the crevices. Connect from within. They can teach us, but only if we can learn. I'm just an ordinary woman. Nothing extraordinary, just plain ordinary. I did what was necessary to survive. My poor beginnings were only poor for lack of the dollar. Instead, I was gifted with natural surroundings that nature provided. Things like clean water, clean air, breathing peaceful surroundings, enough food to satisfy, making me appreciate the thing that sets me apart. I'm just an ordinary woman, working hard to create something extraordinary. I never give up. I keep on creating a better version of myself. I'm not legendary, not living extraordinary. I'm just here living life. My beat beginnings have only forced me to redefine the word beat which to me means to keep evolving. I've been acquiesced to be a revolutionary in spite of myself. I never thought I'd start a revolution in a world of turmoil. Instead, I envisioned myself as sympathetic, taking in the ones in the know, the ones whose words did not matter to most, but touch everyone. Instead, what happened was an evolution, a generation known using the ways of those whose words were not accepted by those who follow the norm. A new generation, an evolution of plain words, sparking a flurry of excitement. The words mattered, the words brought voices. Voices that were told to be silent. The words sometimes inspired. An array of beats speaking music of cooperation, inclusion of every shade, notes of kindness, a new beat generation. Leading this beat evolution was someone who didn't want fame, didn't want the spotlight. No, in fact, she wanted only to give everyone a voice to include instead of omit. I found myself picking up the reins and leading the pack. I started a beat generation evolution. What is B? What is B? He asked me what, what is B was, so I told him what is B is not a what. B is a bit. What is B? It's jazz blue. What is crying beat? out on a night of bloody stars? It was 10 a.m. I was working the day shift at the Kerouac Cafe and Bookstore. That's a place I made up. Not many people read books anymore, especially poetry books. They also have no use for people most of the time unless they can use them for some reason or another. As I sat on an old piano stool that had been there since the beginning of time, long after the old player piano had been sold and taken away by antique dealers, I started to watch the expressions of people passing by the front plate glass window. I was positioned in such a way that I could see everyone passing by on the sidewalk. But also beyond that, I saw passengers' faces riding by in the cars on the street too. Some sad, some glad, some looking like they were moderately mad. There was one cute little brown-eyed girl clutching her dolly and laughing at what her dolly seemed to say. People are funny creatures. They don't give you the time of day. Oops. 
They are rushing to get to nowhere, worried they will miss something. Yet they don't know what that something is. Most look determined to reach a certain destination. They have no time to stop in the cafe and bookstore, grab a cup of joe, indulge in a little conversation, read some spontaneous prose. In the Kerouac Cafe and bookstore, we have some real smooth jazz playing in the background. <laughs> Me? I take my coffee black, and when no one's looking, I may sneak a little drop or two of fine bourbon in there just for flavor. I've read all the books in this place, Listen to the extensive collection of jazz available here. I'm a thinker. I ponder the reasons why I'm here, where I've been, where I'll go next. I used to make plans for a life. I was just like one of those poor souls outside rushing to nowhere. Time is cruel. It passes quickly, just as the people do in your life. I've determined there's no time worth the time it takes to love someone. I used to look forward to seeing my love, rushing to meet them. There weren't enough hours in a day to spend. In summer, we used to go on little picnics in the woods, lying on a fuzzy old blanket, looking lovingly at each other. Once a little bird perched above us on a branch watching us entwined in each other's embrace. The bird flew away just as my love did. Life is lonely now. I sit on this old piano stool, listening to sad music, sipping tainted coffee, staring out a window, watching people pass me by. Time ticks away, waiting for no one. Don't think I'm invincible. I'm not. I try to bend, but if pushed, I'll break into pieces. I have withdrawn into a voided world. It's lonely there. It feels like snowflakes, shards that disappear. I'm there one minute, but if driven to the edge, I'll fall and melt into nothing. I scatter myself in all directions trying to find reason, but nothing makes sense. What remains are fragments of what I once was. Let love reign. The world was filled with green. Music of birds was the theme. The skies were blue, trees were sacred beings, animals roamed freely. Natural selection was the rule until that first shot turned the skies from blue to red. Bang, it zoomed through the air, a shower of rain made of metal, a device so cold it had no specific target. Indiscriminately, it sought the victims. There was no close contact. It didn't see their eyes. It didn't feel the breath leaving them. There was no self-defense. It only brought death. Destruction, sadness, loss. Randomly, it hit the innocent, the guilty, the children. None were ready to succumb to its violent fire. The burning strike of death, the piercing bullet draining their life. Nothing was left but the empty shells, the broken skin, the oozing blood from the heap of cold, colorless flesh. Who do you blame for these happenings? What type of being kills without conscience? Why have these happenings been accepted? Why are we numb to it? Who fights for continued violence? I continue to ask these questions one victim at a time. What beauty do people see when choosing a gun or any weapon? 
how do they how do you justify an instrument of death as being your brand new toy your companion or your feeling of security most won't listen to my words my words are plain they have no flair they are a plea for sanity and reason but people are well conditioned to believe in the idea of kill or be killed if someone is different than you. Fear rules their hearts. So they act cowardly. I remember from a past life, a young man speaking his words and sharing his truth. He was one of the earliest victims only to be dragged, beaten and tied to a cross made of wood left to die wounded and bleeding. He then became a symbol, an excuse to not take responsibility for your own actions. The lie was compounded by saying that he died for your sins as if it was his choice for all of humanity to believe and perpetuate the lies and deception so that others could continue to destroy, maim, rape, and kill. In modern times, we have continued to destroy our own societies, our own families. We keep finding excuses. We pray for the victims we kill. I meditate with my actions. I breathe in the air. I worship my home, the earth. She is my symbol of everlasting life. I preach peace, love, and kindness. Heed my words, they bring gentler times, teach acceptance of our differences, but make an effort to do no harm. Let love rain upon you instead of bullets. What is B? What is B? He asked me what, what is B? B was, so I told him. What is B? B is not a what? B is a kid. What is B? It's jazz blue. What is crying B? out on a night of bloody stars? I write about all different things, and I try to put myself in other people's situations. So what you hear is not, you know, my uh, my personal experiences or all the time. Sometimes they are, but not all the time. This is called Flying Free. While walking along winding trails of green, sifting through gardens in full bloom, brushing against my cheek, a buttery figure flew by. Sun shone through stained glass paper wings in shades of blue, yellow, and gray. Landing on a flower with petals of crimson red, Wandering mine, imagining myself unencumbered, flying free, sipping nectars like fine wines, flittering along with no cares, flying free. The forest is many things. The forest is many things. The sun, the, the sun filtering through the canopy creating an ambience of warmth. The fronds of a fern curling tightly into a ball as dew drops lay upon it. But as nightfall descends, shadows aren't always as what they seem. Trees stay silent so others can be heard. Songbirds lay in their nests up high singing their songs softly as they fall into slumber. Frogs chirp in unison as fog creeps in, providing them cover from predators. An owl silently descends upon an unsuspecting meadow vole who becomes sustenance for its young. A family of deer walks slowly to the river bank for a drink. A skunk, waves its perfume to keep others at bay while it digs the soil for grubs. 
For others, a meditation, a contemplative peaceful place, sometimes beautiful, sometimes brutal. The forest has beauty as well as ominous tones. I wish for the forest to continue undisturbed by those who destroy its peace and purpose. This is a true story um, that actually happened to me. A year had gone by, how time it does fly, since that terrible car accident, leaving mom with head injuries, unable to work, leaving me to delay my plans of becoming a famous living artist painting and sculpting in Boston, Massachusetts. I was only 18 years old, still believing in dreams, waiting for my future. Coming home after working 12 hours straight, the house was blaring with noise. Mom, why is the TV up so loud? Why is it so hot in here? It must be 90 degrees. There was no answer only noise and heat. In the kitchen, the gas stove, all burners lit, flames rising up, no pots, just flames. The kitchen sink had a steady stream of water pouring down the drain. The washing machine, water churning without clothing. The sound of the vacuum running, still sitting still on the floor. At that moment, my mom rushing toward me, looking wild-eyed and very distraught, dragging a big black garbage bag across the floor, yelling, go throw this bag away and we will all be saved. Opening the bag, I looked at the contents. Inside were all my belongings. I thought to myself, did my whole life really fit into one garbage bag? Could the world be saved if me and my belongings were thrown away? Would my mom be okay if I followed her instructions today? Hello, operator? Could you please send an ambulance right away? What's the problem? Um, I think my mom just lost her mind. Please hurry. Our two eyes met. Our two eyes met. I saw a soul I recognized from long ago. We are not strangers, though we just met. Lost from worlds past, we now connect. What connected us meeting for the first time? Was it a look or a feeling? How do you recognize a familiar soul? I would have to say, I felt it, but saw it in your eyes. I do not want to lose you again, but how do I claim you? I don't even know your name. Do you feel the same? How many lifetimes did we spend together? I do not know. Our two eyes met, I saw a soul I recognized from long ago. You seem to recognize me too. You smiled and are approaching. Maybe the connection is never broken, just delayed. All I know is a feeling. Whether it's cosmic or earthly, I will explore you, my new and old friend. I sit alone. I sit alone in an upstairs room. The only company I have are my thoughts. Feelings of sorrow pass over me as I try to hold back the tears. Thinking of happier times when I had someone who seemed to love me, only to leave me for a more exciting and younger version of myself. At least that's what I imagined to be the reason. 
I sit in a comfortable cushion chair, looking out the multi-paned window, overlooking the landscape. I see the sunlight filtering through the trees. The river moves slowly in the background. It is winter, a time when things die off, just as my relationship had come to an end. It's been years since, the fir since he first kissed me, on the banks of the same river, only a few miles downstream from here. He told me then he wanted only me, would never love another, and made me promise to stay with him forever. I promised him, but now I realize his promise and words were empty. He would leave me when a better option came along. That time had come now. Some would say years of love is something to be treasured, but the same years now are viewed as wasted energy on someone who did not know the true meaning of love. The sun is now starting to fade. The day turns to night. I came to this place to escape my loneliness, only to feel utterly alone and helpless. My thoughts are my only companion. And I'm going to end with drowning. Loneliness rips at the heart like broken shards of glass. As a lonesome traveler roams without a destination, an artist struggles to create without canvas, paint, or brushes. A hiker is lost in the wilderness with no search and rescue. The burdens of life bring frozen tears that melt into quicksand. I'm drowning. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Way to go, Deb. Way to go, Deb. <laughs> Deb, thanks. For there we yeah. go. Well done, Deb. Well done. What is B? What is B? He asked me what, what is B? B was, so I told him. What is B? B is not a what. B is a kid. What is B? It's jazz blue. What is crying out on a night of booty stars over?